You're watching Let the Quran Speak, and now we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers. If you have a question, visit our website, quranspeaks.com. Dr. Shabir, the question is, I became a Muslim recently and struggle with my five daily prayers. Some days I pray, some days I don't, and some days I pray only one or two prayers. I feel guilty and worried about the afterlife. Please help. Yeah, I, it's a common uh, question because, you know, somebody uh, comes newly into the faith and they want to uh, do everything right. Uh, uh, but, you know, good intentions are one thing. And then how do we turn our lives around and adopt a new schedule and so on? This can prove a difficulty for some people. So we advise them to uh, do what they can as much as they can and, and, and keep it regular. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let me step back a bit and say that more generally, we know from the Quran that uh, God requires us to do that which we are able. Uh, the Quran says, La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wasaha. God does not uh, enjoin upon a soul or does not burden a soul with more than the soul can bear. So each person is a di different level of, uh, you know, uh, preparedness to bear di the difficulties of the faith, mm -hmm. or you can say the requirements of the faith, uh, or to do the requirements of the faith. So let each do according to what God, God has guided them to do. Like for you and me, we can't imagine ourselves missing any of the five daily prayers. We'll feel like something is missing for our, from our lives. Nobody has to tell us to pray. We've been praying for so long, um, you know, it's going to feel odd if, if we didn't pray. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the, the flip side we have to imagine is for somebody coming into this newly and uh, thinking, well, wait a minute, I've got all these schedules and um, uh, things that routines in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I change all of those to accommodate the prayers? Uh, our, our routines have tended to revolve around the prayer. So we know what we'll do after Fajr. Uh, like after Fajr, I'll check my WhatsApp messages, <laughs> for example. I noticed that you do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, and I know what I'll do after the, the afternoon prayer. Maybe that's the time I have my lunch. Uh, I do know what I'll do after the late afternoon prayer. Uh, maybe that's the time I take a nap. Uh, I know what I'll do after the uh, late evening prayers. Um, maybe that's the time I take uh, my, my supper. And then, uh, you know, late night prayer, that's a no-brainer. That's the time I go to sleep. Last mm -hmm. thing before I go to sleep, I do my late night prayers. Uh, but, but somebody has to get into that routine. So we say, okay, let's, uh, you know, break every difficult problem can be broken down into smaller bits. Uh, there, is a, there is a hadith uh, in which the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, reportedly said that the most beloved deeds in the sight of God are the deeds which are regular, even if they are small. Mm. So start small, but keep it regular. Uh, so uh, the, one of the easiest prayers to get done is the last one before going to bed. It's like, you know, you're going to brush your teeth before going to sleep do this one last thing, do a prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, and many you know, people are used to praying many people before are, they go to sleep. Anyway, exactly. Right? And if one came from like the background of another religion, our Christian friends, for example, pray before mm -hmm. uh, they go to sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're devout, right? Mm -hmm. They may kneel at their bedside just before going to sleep. So we do the same thing. We just have a prayer mat right there. And, uh, you know, our prayer is slightly different. It involves uh, a, a sort of kneeling and bowing and prostrating. And that's, that's the last thing. So make that like be, without any change or nothing, whether it's rain or snow or whatever, last thing before going to bed, late night prayer, that's none. So that's regular, that's one. Now we get up in the morning, we're going to brush our teeth, right? As the little children's song says, you know, I get up in the morning, I brush <laughs> my teeth, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, <laughs> right? So, uh, it, it, you know, make it a habit to also um, uh, offer, the, offer the prayer. And, uh, you know, the, you know, if we say, no, I don't have time to, uh, to, to offer a prayer, then I'll say what my doctor said to me when I said I don't have time to exercise. <laughs> he said, but you have to have time to brush your teeth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he meant to say that uh, you, you're, you have to think of the exercise as being If it's as important, important enough, you'll do yeah, it, Yeah, you'll right? do it, right? So in a similar way, if we think that the morning prayer is important enough, do it. Because mm -hmm. this is before you got busy, before you go anywhere. Some people may be reading the newspaper. Some people may be watching an early morning news broadcast uh, while having a breakfast. And of course, that will slow down the rate of having breakfast, which is not bad because it, it is good for you to absorb your meal uh, um, and, and to digest it properly rather than to rush through it. But, you know, a spare a couple of minutes. And, you know, the, if we, uh, the, the other uh, part of breaking down this big problem into smaller uh, doable parts is that uh, each prayer of the five times uh, per day involves a number of uh, obligatory cycles and then some other cycles which are graded differently, some said to be optional, some said to be sunnah or regular practice, 
some said to be even wajib or or uh, in a way essential, but uh, not to the level of obligatory. So if we focus on the obligatory portions, the morning prayer only has two. And each cycle uh, prayed at a reasonable p- pace would only take one minute each. So mm. two minutes and you're done. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you just got up in the morning, you are washing because you're getting ready to go to work or school or whatever, then do the morning prayer. Now, if you, you couldn't have uh, woken up because it's not your habit you, or you, for whatever reason you didn't wake up exactly in the t- time prescribed according to the prayer charge, do it whenever you wake up, but make it regular. Mm-hmm. And then once you're already in the mood of doing that, you're doing it regularly, the next thing that will occur to your mind is that, wait a minute, I'm going through all of this effort to do it regularly. Why don't I do it also in the prescribed time? And that can apply also for the rest of the prayers. Let's say somebody was at the office during the day and uh, being a new Muslim or whatever, they're a little bit shy. They don't want to pull out the prayer mat in front of all of their co-workers and start praying. They might look odd or funny in the office. So let's say they delayed the prayer until they got home at night. Eventually, uh, as long as they keep doing this regularly, eventually, you know, they will graduate to the next stage of thinking, you know what, I'm doing this anyway. Mm. Instead of doing it later outside of the proper time, why don't I do it within the proper time? Mm -hmm. Why don't I be bold for a change and do it whether I'm at the office or school or wherever I happen to be? And if some people laugh, that's up to them. But we'll have the last laugh in the day, on the Day of Judgment, <laughs> right? Um, so, so, we, so, so to break down that larger problem, what have we said? Um, think of the compulsory uh, cycles. Uh, there, there are only a few cycles in each prayer. They only last from two minutes to about four minutes um, because the, the most number of comp- compulsory cycles are f- is four mm-hmm. in, in the late night prayer. Um, so... Uh, do those for a start. Then you can add other optional cycles later on. Um, uh, do the ones you can regularly. And uh, if you can't do them in the proper time, do them in a later time just to make them up and to be able to say to God, you know, I knew, recognize this as an obligation uh, because I'm a Muslim now. Um, I, I did them however late, but better, you know, half a loaf is better than no bread. Uh, better late than never, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but so I've I done it, and then eventually graduate to the next phase of doing them all on, on time, every time. Mm-hmm. So, Doctor, I think a common question that people who are new to Islam are thinking is: At what point am I going to be sinned for not doing certain things? Like, is it like I become a Muslim and you know I don't pray five times a day? I'm going to be sinned by God, or is there some sort of allowance? And when does that allowance end? Yeah, I want to give a balanced answer here because on the one hand, we we don't want to say, okay, like Islam is this whole big iron ball. You either carry it uh, or, or not. Hmm. Um, and and somebody looks at it and says, oh, wait a minute, it doesn't look like I can lift that. Mm-hmm. And so they don't even bother becoming Muslim because it looks like it's too hard to be a yes. Muslim. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to put it in such a way that, you know, there are gradations of things. So uh, come in and do of it whatever you can. Um, there, there is a, a, a hadith that says uh, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, if I command you to do something, do of it as much as you can. And if I forbid you from doing something, then refrain from it as much as you can. Mm-hmm. So this idea of as much as you can, sometimes it's lost on people. We think it is all or nothing. Either mm-hmm. you're a perfect Muslim or you're not a Muslim at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, it it's better for the person to embrace Islam, at least accept the monotheism of Islam, profess that there is no God but God, accept the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as uh, the guide and teacher sent by God for us to follow as our living example, and uh, follow these principles as much as we can. Obey God as much as we can. Um, follow the Prophet's example as much as we can. And we can we keep improving and increasing over time. But to, to answer your question, at what point would we be sinning? Like technically, uh, for a Muslim, the uh, what is accepted in classical Islamic discourse about this is that the five daily prayers are an obligation, mm-hmm. and if we if we deliberately uh, omit them, then we are actually uh, committing the sin of omission here, and um, and so we want to make make up for them either by praying them later, uh, or eventually, perfectly praying them in in their due time. Uh, But uh, would God give some leeway to a person who is adjusting the way we are suggesting? Well, just uh, I I think many uh, seasoned Muslims who are already accustomed to praying and so on will be saying, no, 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 there is no uh, leeway because they're thinking, I'm going through all of the difficulty. Why should the other person get it? It's got free by not doing it, right? 
But many other Muslims listening to this discourse would say, you know what, uh, Sheikh Shabir is right. Um, we have to give some space for people to learn and grow and develop. You know, we weren't always like the way we are now. So many Muslims have trouble with prayers as well. Right? True, yeah. true. And and even those who are regular now were not always regular. There mm-hmm. were times when we missed. There were times when we were heedless and so yeah. on. And we learned and, and we grew. Mm-hmm. So do we want God to go back to that time and penalize us for everything we've done wrong or everything we've omitted from that time? And no, we may have near and dear ones who are in a similar situation, even if we ourselves are perfect. Uh Do we want God to penalize all of our near and dear ones? Like, uh, let's have some mercy on others and let's ask God to have mercy on them as well. So it is my humble view that God will be lenient to people who are adjusting. They have the right intention. They have uh, embraced the faith and uh, they, they realize from the start that this is a lot for me to do. Uh, but they are willing to do it, even if it takes them some time to get accustomed and acculturated to it, and they're learning and growing and developing and in- improving uh, as time goes. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you for your time, You're welcome. Tired of seeing how Muslims are depicted in media? You can help. Support Muslim Media Hub, the first of its kind to empower young Muslims to create content for film, TV, and social media. Visit our website, quranspeaks.com, and donate.